Well, as soon as you walk in the museum, the staff are like smiling, which makes you feel really welcome. When you get to the desk, they offer a brochure for the museum and the option of having an audio guide, which I thought was really nice because they seemed really polite and happy to explain about these two things. We also had a tour guide who felt really open to answer any questions we had, which definitely I think made me feel welcomed. The free visit information I was aware of was a leaflet, but I am now aware that they use social media, which I think is great. Then museum could use social media to make a better experience for all ages. Teenage History Club have already had a teen Twitter takeover, and the idea of taking selfies and posting them on Twitter has already been introduced. This could work well in your museum as you have a horse which visitors can sit on and take selfies on, which we have called the hipster horse. Or you could have a mat or a sticker which indicates where you can take a selfie. Also, you could make use of QR codes so the visitors could scan the QR codes and receive more information about an exhibit. The museum was suitable for all ages and they had dress up clothes and they had a full size sea henge model and they also had a mini sea henge. Um, the mini sea henge was brilliant because you could, everyone could do it. Um, the dress-up clothes, unfortunately, were a bit too small for me, so I couldn't try them on. But it was nice to go inside the big sea henge as well. Unfortunately, the audio guide it was a little bit long and full of information. It was a little bit too much to take in. It would be a good idea to separate the audio guide into smaller segments. Even though some of the films we found really interesting with Thomas Paine, we thought that the Fetford history it was a bit long, but it would be better if it was shorter. Even though we did like the tidbit bags, they were placed all around the museum. We thought maybe that they could have been more interesting for our age, and maybe for adults and their kids, maybe some questions and some answers they could do could be more interesting. I think the seating area is a nice touch. When we sat down, we were comfortable looking at things around us and relaxing. The museum is small and quiet, which gives it a nice and relaxed atmosphere. I think to make this even better, bean bags or other comfortable seats could replace the chairs to make it more inviting. What I found exciting about the trip was that all the things that you can discover within the small museum, they say less is more and that's definitely true. Especially with the small trench under the, the one room about World War One. The building I definitely like, especially when it's in mint condition, considering it's more than 500 years old. Especially, even though there are some extensions here and there, I still like that they kept the feeling of the original building. The range in the kitchen, that was, that was really impressive because it was still active. It, they have events all the way through the years and that just makes it more, more realistic. But the kitchen was definitely interesting considering it's plastic little recreations of food and baking materials, especially that uncanny valley-like statue that sits in the corner of the room. It was very immersive. The museum used different tactics in order to fully immerse people in history, such as sound effects. They also had the shop area that you could go in, so you could get the feeling of being a shopkeeper in that time. And replicas were also able to be held and touched in order to give a feeling of being there without actually damaging the objects. We really loved the dressing up. Costumes were, even though I think some more bigger costumes that could fit adults, because of course adults have a sense of humour too, I think they could fit on them as well. We all love the hats, really. Maybe they should have put more in. They were suitable for everybody. They were just really interesting, and then certain hats for certain army jobs, for certain people, women and children, and men and their soldiers. I felt that there was a lot of satisfying interactive things around the 
museum, including little phones that you can listen to wartime tunes with and other voices with, including a little miniature ancient house that can be interacted with, including smells and sounds of the time. The signs were okay, but as we walked around we noticed that there wasn't many signs and with the interactables it posed a problem because we couldn't tell if we were allowed to use them and sometimes the signs were so small we couldn't see them at all. On the shop, it doesn't really have any sign at all saying that you can go into it or not. Hipster Horse had a very good sign as it said jump on for a ride in very bold letters and anyone could catch it with their eyes. There are certain signs that just need more clarification. More open this or try this signs could have been included as some items that we were allowed to interact with but we weren't sure whether we were allowed. For example, the computer at the back of the room. This area looked like an area for staff only so it all left us puzzled. My favourite exhibit was the mummified cat because I like cats. My favourite exhibit was the skeleton because I love creepy things miniature carousel because it still lights up and works and it's a carousel not a galloper because it goes anti-clockwise instead of clockwise. The mini carousel because it's very old-fashioned. The diver's helmet because it's different to all the other exhibits. My favourite item in the museum is Horace the Tiger because the way that they've positioned him has made him look so fierce and majestic and when you first come in it's just so different from everything else you find in the museum. Horace the Tiger because he stands out as being the first thing you see when you walk into the museum. My favourite exhibit is the wooden cat head due to the textures and the way it is sculpted. The Galloper's horse that you were able to sit on as it was colourful and attracted you at first. I also love the fact that we made it into the hipster horse. It's the Oprah fish, aka Le Fish, um, that we decided to name it. I like it because it's like so big and so colourful and the thought that it actually like was alive now stuffed it's just like crazy the opa fish or as we decided to name it lefish it is a piece of history that has been so cleverly preserved and stuffed just for it to be on view today i personally think it's fabulous we thought it was so fabulous we decided to take selfies with it lots of selfies 